Okay, in this example, what we're going to do is look at an existing component and create a new component using that existing component's build data. So in this case, we have a set of standard bolts, but we need a set of bolts for a bleed ring configuration. So we ask our engineer, or if our engineer doesn't know, we researched on our own to find a cut sheet for bleed rings. So as you can see here, I have an ANSI class 150 bolt for bleed rings. And I come here to the 150 column. I see that the one inch size, which is the size we're going to be building today, it has four bolts in the set. Uh, it has a half inch diameter, and the length of the bolts is four and a quarter. Okay. If you ever find a value that's not in a standard quarter notation, you're going to go ahead and round it up because that's how bolts are bought. They're not bought in decimal, they're bought in quarter inch intervals. So there we go. So back to our spec editor. We come here and we see that it's referencing bolt underscore 150. That's the name of the build data or the data table. So we click on this and it opens up that data table in our base catalog data. So this is your catalog that's being used to build this component. If we click this little folder over here to the left pane, it will actually open our reference catalog. So that way we don't have to do it or browse to it to find it. So here's, we're in tester.cat, the one we built earlier. We're going to go to the data table drop down and we just go to gaskets bolts, which is the component type. Uh, the category is stud bolts. And if you remember from earlier, bolt underscore 150 is the data table that's being used. So because we're creating a new component that's going to have different build data, we want to use this as a starting point. We're going to right click, copy. That automatically creates a new data table with copy of as prefixed on the original name. Easy enough, you can right click this or you can come up here to the preview pane, remove that. And we're just going to add in a little more notation for bleed rings. And coming up with a standard notation is fine as long as you're the only one editing the spec. Um, if you not sure what you want to put here to keep it consistent look at other projects or ask another designer okay click off that now we have this build data uh, unique to the bleed ring that we're trying to build for it so we're going to double click that that opens up this this has all the build data from the original bolt set what we're going to do right now and the first thing you should do is delimit in this case we're only building it for a one inch size um, more realistically, uh, when you're building this, you want to build it for all the available sizes since you have the cut sheet data. So since I have the cut sheet data right here, I should be building it for all rational sizes that will be used by that client. So if I know they use 2, 3, uh, 4, 6, 8, 10, then I want to build that. I still wouldn't waste my time with sizes I know the client doesn't, uh, doesn't allow. So in this case, we know that the client is using 1. And we'll just assume that this is the only size the client uses, is one inch bolts for bleed rings. Okay, We come back to our build data, and we verify again, four bolts, half inch diameter, four and a quarter for the length. So we come here, number of sets, and four is correct, half inch diameter, correct, and 4.25 should be our new length. So the only thing that got adjusted in this in this bolt configuration is the length, which makes sense because a bleed ring just needs a longer bolt. It doesn't need it to uh, change in uh, strength and stuff like that. So we're going to go ahead and save. I did it by right-clicking the tab that represents this open data table, and we click Save. Click Close. Make sure you save the actual uh, catalog as well, otherwise those changes won't, won't exist. So. Once we do that, we get a prompt down here. The base catalog has been updated. Yes, I want to update from that. Do you want to update the base catalog that's in the spec? Yes, I do. Okay. When it does that, it closes out all of the open specs. You have to double click to open it back up. Okay. In our now we still only have the one uh, stud bolt, but we have that build data that exists in the background down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy again that existing component and we're going to paste it into its own category. So click that, that header, paste, and there's a copy. 
come down here to its description since it's highlighted we're editing that second component get rid of the copy it will have likely the same long description um, I, the way I like to distinguish between the two is I put in stud bolts bleed okay uh, well in capital <laughs> okay and what this will do is allow the designer to see what the difference is between these two also when you're creating a component that's not supposed to be used in every operation in the standard operation you want to make it optional this makes it so that the it ping it colors it differently or it makes it unaccessible without the designer being aware that way they have to turn on their optional viewer so by turning on optional and adding in this description into the short into the short uh, description <laughs> we are we're able to distinguish this component from the other one and there's one more step I'm gonna go ahead and apply that so you can see the the changes up here uh, there is a difference between these two and that's the build data what actually goes to make it in the in the model so as you can see here this one that we just made has the same data table reference as it did earlier we need to go ahead and swap that out with the one we just built the bolt bleed ring 150 okay and if you click on the little preview tab you can see that only thing available is that one inch size that we created earlier go ahead and apply you can save here which saves it to the spec but it doesn't do you any good until you actually save your project so if you save your project it will save your spec so there's no need to save these individual tabs if you're going back and forth through multiple specs then saving your tabs is a good idea okay that's all we have for now